shut off one of these lights, so maybe it's a little bit easier to see. Do you have a red expo marker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo! That's Thank you. Organized. Organized. That we knew, know what those learning days were. Okay. So, like I said, we are going to go over your homework today. We're going to do a few more practice problems with this. We're going to go back, do a few more practice problems with six and seven. And then math, well, time will be over for who wrote high on my board. You know what I say to your high? Ha. <gasps> ah. Anyways. Um, so, um. Then it'll be math RTI in half hour anyway. So anyways, your homework was three and five and seven. So what we were doing was finding the rule, like how the numbers were changing. And then we had to find the unknown term. So we had to find the rule, the difference between two digits, and then find the unknown number, okay? So number three was one ninth, one seventh, no, sorry, one in nine tenths. I don't know what I'm just saying. One in nine tenths, comma. One and seven tenths, comma, blank, comma, one and three tenths, comma, one and one tenth. How do I first find out the rule? How do I find out the rule, Eric? Subtract one, um, nine over ten. Um, Can two. you say it in, like, words? Like, tell me what I need to do. Uh, subtract. Subtract what? The first, subtract the first what? And second. Yeah, we need to subtract two pairs of numbers. So I'm just going to pick the first two. We also could pick the last two. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to pick the first two, which is 1 and 9 tenths minus 1 and 7 tenths. Can we subtract these fractions right now? No. no. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. They yes. have the same common denominator. So we can just subtract. What's 9 minus 7? 2. two. two. Our denominator is 10. It stays the same. 1 minus 1? Zero. 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 So the rule is to add... Two tenths or subtract two tenths? Subtract. Right, because our numbers are getting smaller, so we are subtracting two tenths. So now, how do I find out the missing digit? Someone raise their hand. Oh, look, I had a red one. Who knew? Gabby, how do we find the missing digit? Did you? <laughs> you can find the missing digit by subtracting two tenths from one and seven tenths. Beautiful. Okay, two tenths from one and seven tenths because that was the last digit and we need to find the digit after it so we're doing some subtraction can i subtract these fractions right now yes, yes. 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 people don't answer unless you have the right hand, unless you know for sure guessing doesn't help anyone they have the same common denominator so we can already subtract seven minus two is one one minus nothing is one. so our missing digit is one and five tenths which actually should be written as one and one half in simplest form, just for the record. That's how it would be written in simplest form. Questions on number three? No? Okay, then we're moving to question five. So here, they told us what to start at, and they told us what to add. They already told us the rule, and they told us we want out to four terms. So the first term is going to be one half. We're going to add three, one third. We're going to add one-third. We're going to add one-third. So how do I add one-third to one-half? I need to do what? Find the simplest. Nope. Not, not, not the, the least common denominator. The least common denominator. denominator. So let's list multiples of two. Two, two four, six, eight, ten. ten. Let's list multiples of three. Three, six. six. Oh, what's my least common multiple? Six. six. So I need to change my two to six. And then my 1 would become a 3, and I need to change my 3 to 6. My 1 would become a 2. So 3, 6 plus 2, 6 is what? 5, 6. Five, five six. six. Now, what do I need to add to 5, 6? Abby? <clears throat> 2 and Three, two six. Yeah, two six because we're adding one six, but we already know the equivalent fraction for one third is two six. So I'm just going to add two six again. 
And then I did seven over six. Can I leave it like that? No. No, that's an improper fraction. So I'm going to take out a whole. And I would have one six left with one whole. Now I have one sixth. What do I need to do to one sixth? One in one sixth, sorry. What do I need to do to one in one sixth? I need to, everyone, add, add two six. One plus two is three. Three over six. Our one stays the same, which actually one six or three six can be written as one half. So I'm going to throw that in parentheses right there. So our four terms were one half, five six, one and one six, one and a half. If you wrote three six, that's fine. Okay? Questions, complaints, concerns. Once again, this takes time. You cannot finish it in one second. It is time consuming. It is time consuming. It is not simple, simple. It is the opposite, really. What? Oh, no. oh, well, great. You just volunteered yourself to go get my remote off my table. Thanks. Oh, good job. Good job. Okay, now we need to move down to number seven. Oh, really? Move down to number seven. Thank you. Jared's puppy weighed three and three fourths ounces at birth. At one week old, the puppy weighed five and one eighth ounces. At two weeks old, the puppy weighed six and a half. They want to know what it's going to be at two weeks old. So we need to, if it continues to grow the same, I mean at three weeks old, if it can continues to grow the exact same amount each week, what will it be at week three? So first off, how do we find out how much he's growing each week, John? Yep, you have to subtract two digits, or two terms. I don't care which terms you pick. I'm going to pick the first terms. Obviously, the bigger one goes on top. Can I subtract these right now? No. No. Because they need a what? Common denominator. Common denominator. Mrs. Greifel knows the least common denominator is going to be what? Eight. Eight. So I don't need to change my top one, but I do need to change my second one, and then my three is going to become six. Can I take six away from one? No, so I need to borrow from my friend the four. Five is going to become four, and I'm going to add a whole eight over eight over here. So my new problem is four and nine eighths minus three and six eighths. Nine minus six is three. My eight stays the same. Four minus three is one. So how much weight does the puppy grow each week? Yes. Mm-hmm. Ounces. ounces. I'm just writing this for myself. One and three eighths ounces is the rule. That's how much he's gaining each week. So now how much do I find out how he weighs on the third week? How do I do that? Gabby? You add Yes, we take what he weighed at week two, and we add what he's gaining each week. Can I add them just like this? No. No, No. what do I need to do? Find the least common denominator. Which, by looking at two and eight, we should automatically know that the least common denominator is eight. eight. So I'm going to change my two to my eight, and I multiply two four times to get to eight, so my one's going to go to four. So I have four plus three, which is seven. Eight stays the same, and six plus one is seven. So the puppy is going to weigh seven and seven eighths ounces on week three. Seven and seven eighths ounces, okay? Before we flip to the next page, I want to do four and six with you guys. Before we flip to the next page, there's no point in going to the next page then coming back to this page. It's a waste of time. For what? You already got a bandage for me today, didn't you? That was me. Are you actually bleeding right this second? Where? I cannot see from here. In my hand. It looks like pen. 
Okay, well, sure. I will leave math to go get you a band-aid. Gabby, erase my board. Why don't you sure? Anyways, we're going to do number four and number six together. And then we'll go to the back page, and then we'll do some up six, seven, and then we will call it a day. Well, not really, because you're going to go to math RTI then, and then you're going to have to do more math, so. Um, math's good for your brain. All right, so let's do four. We could do two and four and six. Yeah, let's do two, four, and six. Yay! Time. So... I have one and three eighths, one and three fourths, two and one eighth, space, two and seven eighths. Is my rule going to be adding something or subtracting something, Bree? Are my numbers going up or down? Up. That means I'm going to be adding something. We just don't know what we're adding yet. How do I find out what I am adding where? What should I do to find out what I'm adding? We gotta find the rule. How would we find the rule? Phoebe, you wanna help her out? Subtract the first and second. Yeah, take two digits. I don't care what two digits, as long as they're directly next to each other and subtract them. We know we need to subtract them because our rule is going to be adding. So I'm going to take one and three fourths, and I'm going to subtract one and three eighths. Oh, sorry, one and three eighths from it. That way, I know what the difference is between the two numbers. Can I subtract them like this right now? No. No, because I need to. Find the least common denominator. My least common denominator between 8 and 4 is going to be 8. I'm going to change my 4 to an 8, and I had to do that 4 times 2, which equals 8, so my 3 is going to become a 6. So now I have 1 and 6 eighths minus 1 and 3 eighths. What is 6 minus 3? 3. My 8 stays the same. 1 minus 1 is? Zero. 0. So my rule is to add 3 eighths. Woo! Now that we know the rule, how do we find the missing digit? Mason! Yeah, so we need to add the rule to the last digit before the blank one. One and three is... Four. four. My eight stays the same. Two plus nothing is two. So my missing digit is two and four eighths, which really should be written as two and a half in simplest form. Okay? Everyone see how we did that? Yeah. You should be following along with me because uh, you didn't do this one for homework. I checked you, Eric. Stop it. Mm -hmm. All right, number four, we have two fifths, or two and two fifths, two and one sixth, one and eleven twelfths, blank, one and five twelfths. Am I, are my numbers going up or down, Zerbo? Are they getting bigger or smaller? We're going from two to one. So that means they're going down, which means are we going to be adding or subtracting? Subtracting. Subtracting. So we know we're going to be subtracting something. We just don't know what. How do I find out what I'm subtracting, Malik? Um, How do I find out what my rule is? We know we're going to be subtracting, but how do I know what I'm going to be subtracting? By, um, we take two digits, and what do we do with those digits? We find the least common. No, we're not finding the least common denominator yet. We're going to take these two digits, 
the first two terms, I shouldn't say digits, I should say terms. We're going to take the first two terms, and what are we going to do with the terms? Ethan, we're going to subtract them. We're going to find the difference between the two terms. The bigger one needs to be on top. And since we know we're going down this time, the first one's on top. Can I subtract these right now? No. No, I need a least common denominator. What's my least common denominator between 12 and 6? 12. 12. 12. I don't need to change my top one. I do need to change my bottom one. My 6 is going to become 12, and my 1 is going to become 2. What is 5 minus 2? 3. 2 minus 2 is nothing. So I'm subtracting 3 twelfths from each digit. Now that I know my rule, how do I find my missing number? Gabby? Fabulous. I take 3 twelfths away from the last digit before the missing one. 11 minus 3 is 8, right? Yeah. 8 over 12, 1 minus nothing is 1. So the answer is 1 and 8 twelfths, but 8 twelfths can actually get simpler. Does anyone know what 8... And 12 can be divided by? Can be divided by 2, but it can be divided by something bigger. 4. 4 can go into 8 2 times, and it can go into 12 3 times. So the actual answer in simplest form is 1 and 2 thirds. Okay? 1 and 2 thirds. Cool? Yeah. How's it going? You're going to have a test on this in a week. So if we have questions, we should be asking questions. We're going to do number six. This one tells us to start at, and it's telling us we're subtracting. So I don't need to find the rule because I already have the rule. It's already telling me my rule. So I need to, sub oh, is that an eight? Sorry. Yeah. I need to subtract three-fourths from Three and one eighths. Can I do that right now? No. No, because we don't have the same common denominator. Define the, what is the same common the least common denominator between eight and four, everyone? Eight. Eight. My top one doesn't need to change. My bottom one does. Two times four equals eight, so I need to multiply the top one by two as well. Now I have one three and one eighth minus six eighths. Can I do that? Yes. No, I cannot do that. How do I do that? I, have to borrow. I gotta borrow from my friend the three. My friend the three is gonna become a two. I'm gonna add a whole to this. So now I have two and nine eighths minus six eighths. What is nine minus six? Three. three. So I have three eighths. So my next digit is two and three eighths. How do I find out the next digit? Gabby, how do I find out my next digit? I'll tell me anyways. Okay. My last digit was two and three eighths. What do I need to do to find the third digit? Uh, you need to subtract six eighths from three. Right. We know we need to subtract three fourths from it, but we already found the equivalent fraction for that, which was six eighths. So can we subtract six from three? No. Got to borrow from my friend the two. Two is going to become a one. Three is going to become a 13. 13 minus six is seven over eight. One minus nothing is one. So my third digit is one and seven eighths. I have one more digit to find. How do I find my next digit, Ethan? Um, you find your next digit and always Six eighths, which is the equivalent of three four. Seven minus six is one over eight. One minus nothing is one. So my last digit is one and one eighth. Woo! So each time we needed to subtract three fours, but we already found the equivalent fraction to three fours, which was six eighths. We didn't have to keep on finding that. We already found it once. We're not passing sticky notes, so we. You're paying attention to math class, okay? Otherwise, you're going to be hanging out with me during recess and be doing more math. No one wants to do that. Thanks, Oh, uh, By the way, when you were doing number four, how, when you were trying to find the common denominator for 10 and 12, how did you instantly sum it up to 12? It was 6 and 12. 
But the denominator. No, the denominators were 12 and 6. The denominator was not 10 anywhere. No, it was not. All right, let's do number 8. And then we'll flip to the back side. All right, a baker started out with 12 cups of flour. She had nine and one-fourths cups of flour left after her first batch of batter she made. She had six and a half cups of flour left after the second batch she made. If she makes two more batches, how many flour will be how much flour will be left? So S is gonna be for starting. She had 12. First batch, she had nine and one fourth left. Second batch, she had six and a half left. It doesn't want to know what it had for what's gonna be left after the third. It wants to know what's gonna be left after the fourth. So we have to find two more digits out. How do I find out how much flour she used for each batter? Each batter, yes. How do I find out how much she used for each batter, Maddie? How do I find that out? This is the sixth problem we have done this way today. We have done the exact same thing each first starting step. What do I need to do? I need to find something that tells me the rule. How do I find the rule of what's happening between each batter? Hey, that shows me you should probably be asking questions if you can't answer this. If you can't answer this, you should be asking me questions because there means there's something you're not understanding. Isaiah, how do I find out the rule between what's happening between each batch of batter? I need to know how I started with 12 and got to 9 and 1 fourth. What do I do? I subtract, yeah. I need to find the difference between two batches. That's all I have to do is subtract. Can I subtract something that doesn't have a fraction already? No. No, I'm going to borrow. So my 12 is going to become 11, and I'm just going to make my fraction 4 over 4, because why wouldn't we make it nice and easy and just make it have the same denominator? 4 minus 1 is 3 over 4. 11 minus 9 is 2. So each batch, how much does she use? Thank you. Two and three fourths. Two and three fourths. So how much? How do I find out my third did or my third term? How do I do that? How do I find out my third term, Abby? You subtract one six and a half with two and three fourths. I mean three yeah. fourths. Yeah, you're right. I have the wrong number. Yep. Can we subtract this right now? No. no, if I need the same common denominator, I'm going to make two become a four. My one's going to become a two. Can I subtract yet? No. No, we can't take three away from two. So six needs to become a five. We need to add a whole to this. So two would become a six. Six minus three is going to be three over four. Five minus two is three. So my third digit is three and three fourths. How do I find out how much is in my fourth? Thing, Claire, by subtracting what from what? Yep, three fourths minus three fourths yeah. is going to be nothing, and two one minus or three minus two is one. <laughs> so our last digit is just one. Okay. So the rule was to subtract two and three fourths, and we did that till we found a fourth batch. Would she be able to make a fifth batch? Does she have two and three fourths cups of flour left? No. no, she only has one, so she can't even go on to make another batch, okay? Hopefully you are following along with me. I need you to turn your page. We're going to go over one, three, and five. Oh, I 
one, three, and five. One, three, and five. All right. So one was, what is the rule for the sequence? They didn't even want another digit. They just wanted a rule. Are these numbers getting bigger or smaller, Zuri? Five, six, one and a half, two and one, six, two and five, six. Are they getting smaller or bigger? Bigger. So we're going to be adding something. Our rule is going to be add blank. How do I find out what I'm adding? How do I find out what I'm adding? Zoe? You would do five. Adding. Nope. We're not adding something. We're gonna be do we're gonna be finding a difference. So what two numbers am I gonna be finding a difference with, Zoe? Two, two, five, six. And one. Yeah. One and a half. The numbers that are right next to each other. Can I take five, six away from one and a half? No. Nope. I mm -hmm. need to make them have the same common denominator. Does anyone know the common denominator between two and six? Six. six. So my six is going to become a, my two is going to become a six. My one is going to become a three. Can I do this now? No. Nope. No. Nope, so I can't take five away from three. So I'm going to borrow from my friend the one. One's going to become a zero. I'm going to add six over six. So now I have nine six minus five six. So what is nine minus five? Nine. Four. Four over six, which actually equals two over three. So you're going to add two-thirds because four and six can both be divided by two, which equals two-thirds because they want it in simplest form. So each digit, we are adding two-thirds, okay? <laughs> okay, well, there's five minutes left until you're going to Math RTI. You can go before Math RTI. Right now, we're having actual math class, okay? Jalen rode her bicycle in a bikeathon. She rode 33 and 4 a 48 hundredths mile in two or two and two seven tenths hours. If she rode at the same speed, what was her speed in a mile per hour? So we already have a total. So we're not going to be adding and we're not going to be multiplying. What are we going to be doing, Malik? We are going to be dividing. I am going to be dividing. Can I divide like this? Can I just start dividing right now? No. No. Someone tell me what I need to do before I can start dividing. Isaiah? Take the decimal. Right. You could not have a decimal in the divid or in the divisor. So I'm going to move it over one. And if I move it over in the divisor, I have to move it over in the dividend. So now what do I do with that decimal? I need to put it where? Straight up. How many times can 27 go into three? Zero times, can. This is Michael likes to put that X there for place value. How many times could 27 go into 33? Once. Once. 33 minus 27 is 6? Yeah. Bring down my 4. Mrs. Michael doesn't know how to count by 27, so I'm just going to try 27 plus 27 on the side, and I get 54. So it's going to be able to go into times. 64 minus 54 is 10. Bring down my 8. Mrs. Michael still doesn't know how to count by 27, so I'm going to... Five, four. What? Five, four. Three, three. Yeah, I know, but I was going to talk us through that. So I could look here, and if I know 2, 27 plus 27 is 54, ooh, well, 54 plus 54 is going to answer me 108. So goes in four times, which is 108. So she rides 12.12 and 4 tenths mile per hour. Speed racer. He's quick. Okay. And last but not least. Write an expression that represents the statement nine and three, then multiplied by six. So nine. Or it says add 9 and 3. So I know I have to nine, add 9 and 3, then multiply by 6. But is this how it should look? No. No. What do I need, Mason? Need parentheses over the 9 and 3. Right, because it says then multiply. So I need to add these first, then multiply. But if I don't have those parentheses, then according to PEMDAS, we would multiply first. So you have to have those parentheses, okay? I end up being 9 plus 
Eliana's gonna pick up the pens. We are about out of time, so I'm gonna shut off my recording. Isabel, see if you can join Mrs. Akos or if she has anything to do for you for Math RTI, okay? Bye, Isabel. Bye, Isabel. Bye. 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 See you guys Monday. Bye. See you Monday.